Yeah. So there's a little pin. Oh. Welcome back, welcome back for another episode of Wee Wee Bills. So today, one of my boys is gonna come over here and help me at least detail this car some bit, but we won't focus too much on that. You're just gonna get some small snippets of him detailing the car. But the next thing that we got going on, we gotta check the airbag and light is coming from. So I'm, I'm getting an a airbag light. So when I scan the car, it says the code is from an occupational um, occupant safety something. So our occup is saying that that system is sub faulty. So we're gonna hop into this video. We're gonna dig into the driver's seat and then we're going to dig into the passenger seat and see how far we can get done so let's not waste no time like share subscribe drop your comments and thoughts down below turn your post notifications on hey check us out on twitter instagram hey and then you can always get a sneak peek of what's going on to the next video but you can always get a sneak peek into this video hey and everybody happy new year before it comes now let's hop into this video I know in the last video we were wondering why the airbag light is on and then you notice the seatbelt light has been flickering but there's one thing I totally forgot about um, what happened with this car remember the first car over there the airbag was blown on this side and then the seatbelts were locked so more than likely what we have to do Let's change this out. But I mean, this is black and the other one is cream. So I probably have to find a way or just pull the case in and then just change them over. But I'm gonna hop into the other car, pull that other one out and then see if that's really the problem. Let's go. So I'm on the parts car right now. But these are the seats that we basically got out of the original one. So I'm just gonna take this off because normally when the airbag goes off, this should go, this should retract, and also the seat belt. But if that doesn't retract, then more than likely, the only thing I'm guessing could be the next thing would be like the weight sensor that's under the seat. But that's the other thing. But this hopefully, this is the problem. If not, then we gotta look at more stuff. So this, looks like the same length as this one so i don't think is it but uh we're just gonna try it and just to make sure to see if this is the problem or not well let's keep moving so now i'm just gonna try to clear the code and then see what happens This is the code that keeps coming up. So I'm gonna erase it. Oh, it says it was successful. All right, but it still comes back. So maybe that's not the, the one, but I know one thing kind of fixed the, cause now when you could lock the seat belt on it. So I'm gonna try to clear it one more time and then see what happens from now. So I tried using this seat to attach everything and see if the airbag light code still comes up, it still comes up. So I guess the seat shouldn't be the problem. So we're just gonna keep running through to see if there's a faulty wire somewhere, that's why that code is popping. 
So now we have the passenger seat out. So this is the sensor that keeps going on, but you know, I tested the driver's side just to make sure. So I just pulled this out of the passenger seat. So out of the, the parts car, uh, this is the old interior. So all you have to do is remove, remove the, the fabric from right here, cause it's holding by some clips, but I'll show you on the other one. And then you just basically slide it out. Some people, they'll, they'll push these in and then move this and then slide this upwards. So it'll be easier. But this, I just remove all the clips that's holding the weight sensor in or the weight padding this in and then just basically slide it up and then just pull it out from under the seat so i'm gonna show you on this one right now so as i said before you're just gonna remove the fabric so what you could do is use a flat dry screwdriver and just push it up You push it up, keep going, and then use your fingers and just pull it out. And then you can see the clips are out. Now we're gonna go by the sides. And then this side down here. So now, what we're gonna do is these holding the paddings. So all you're gonna do is push these in. So what I'm gonna do is just use this flat dry screwdriver and push it behind it and then let the help pry it out. So that's one. So that's one that's out. I'm gonna try the second one up top here. one doesn't want to really want to come out so that side is out so now you can see how loose it is because now you could just move it around so now the next thing so the next thing what i'm gonna do right now is push this clip down pull this piece out so now this is the the wire that connects to the to the sensor so there's a clip so th there's a little pin that you need to push up in here and then once you push it up you'll be able to slide the sensor out so there's a pin that's holding this down so i'll just use this little screwdriver and pry it up and then you should be able to slide it out So once you push that pin up, you can slide it out. So this is a little pin that I'm saying, just push it up. And once you push it up, you'll be able to slide it out. So now, instead of just removing, so now instead of just removing all of this, all I'm just gonna do is run the wire over top and then just basically slide it out. So 
you push this away and slowly grab it and then just make make sure you, you push it off the the springs and then watch out for this sensor because you know what this is the the bad one but once you're putting the other one in you gotta be mindful of how you're putting it in and see it's out so this is the bad one it has something like some gel like in it but i don't know why this one is sub faulty but this is the one that we have in the code for so now i'll be able to put the other one and remember this soft padding goes onto this side so that's how the way to, to plug it in so let's put the other one in said remember be careful because you really don't want to damage it especially if this one is the only one that we have right now So you see how we we'll push it, we we'll push it back all the way in. So now we're just gonna push these holes in. The, this one was just, these two were just right there, just like that. So now we're gonna push this one in. That's one in, that's two in. So now both of them are in, the padding is down. Now we're just gonna slide the sensor back in its place. Now with that slide in, so now we're gonna put the connector in. You hear that click in? Now you're gonna push this clip in and then make sure you pull this red tab down so it's locked into place and it has no way of moving. Now the next step is to just basically put the fabric, this, this thing over and then lock it into place. So we're gonna do all that and then we're gonna try to put it, install it back in the car and then see what happens. Make, and then clear the code and then hopefully it doesn't come back so now the passenger seat is in so now let's start it and see what code comes up and there you have it the airbag light is gone so that was just the only issue with the car so now everything is working good so now we're gonna just drive it for a few days and then see if anything else comes up I know the last bit of things that we have for the car should get done. Hey, so we finally found the issue that was wrong with the car all along. So it was this. So this is the sensor that was giving issues. This is the one that it said it was sub faulty. So, you know, we had to dig back through and pull some stuff. But the original seat that we got out of the car, that um, interior, we just basically pulled this one. We basically took it from that one and then just switched them. But that's an easier way how to do it because I know a lot of other videos or a lot of other people say, hey, that you have to move that that little that spring piece that holds that, that holds this down to the seat. So it just you just don't have to really do that. You could just basically just remove these two top clips from out of the, the frame of the seat and just basically pull it forward and just get it out. But that's pretty much it. It's a simple way how to get it done. And that's the easiest way how you can change it. Hey, and remember anytime you're doing any airbag work, just remember always disconnect your batteries because you don't want it to just, just to auto, you don't want to just pull it out and then it automatically just
just sets off all the airbags. But hey, thank you for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe, turn your post notifications on. Hey, check out our Instagram page, check out our Twitter page. And make sure that you grab yourself some merch. Check out WeRebuilds.com. Hey, and then we have some stuff coming in for the S5. So those videos gonna probably be dropping like crazy about the S5. We, we, we're done with the Ford. We basically did all the, the, the stuff that needs to be done. I did the oil change off camera because I didn't see the need to do that. But I still need to do that transmission oil and I still need to put some new spark plugs in. But after that, everything, most of the stuff is done. There was a slight code that came up the other day when I was pumping gas. It didn't want to start. It's like a vacuum code that say, hey, it's not, it doesn't have, but after I like restart, restarted the car a couple of times or started turning off started turning off it, it started working again but i maybe do a video on that it's just something simple i just need to change that sensor out but 2013 for this cape is, is actually done i mean it's 95 percent done just that little small or i'll just say 100 because or 99 percent because the rest of the stuff that's left on that car is just maintenance wise but until next time, stay positive, stay motivated.